Hey everyone, welcome back to Euro Truck Simulator 2. And this is not Billy Bob. No. This is a different profile, which uh, I thought I'd run alongside it basically. It's a um it's a cracked profile. If you notice um <coughs> my money, I've got nine hundred and ninety-nine million pa uh, euros. Yeah, this is a cracked account. Uh what I've decided to do is run pro mods on this account. Uh, and if you're not sure what Pro Mods is, check it out. Um, I should, hopefully, if I remember correctly, do an annotation somewhere. If it works or not. Uh, if not, it'll be in the video description. Uh, Pro Mods is a map mod. And if I pull up the map, you can see, for stars, I'm in Le Mans, which is a bit strange. And I zoom out, and you can see all this extra bit of map that's been added. And this is all Pro Mods. It is cool. Um, Adds a lot of extra things, changes the map detail, adds some extra missing cities and roads and stuff like that. It's all good. So anyway, uh, so I'm running Pro Mods, and you notice I'm not driving a normal truck. No, I am driving. When I go outside and have a look at it, this big American Freightliner monolith. Oh yes, and wait for it. It sounds good when it starts. Oh. How good does that sound? So, anyway, plan is I have got planned a pretty cool job. They're going to be a bit difficult. And I'm just going to make sure I actually select it. And here you go. It is a 60 ton tank to go from Le Mans to Croydon, just south of London. I could see this is not going to be easy, but it should be fun. So, let's go and pick this up. Now, I've got a slight admission to make. This is the second time recording this. First time recording it. Um, yeah, the audio is crap. I'm now trying a new technique, including I've now moved my PC to try and eradicate some of the background noise that used to get. And I am really cocking up this back up, backing up to this tank. Also, I am using a new, brand new mouse that I've just been given. So it's going to take some getting used to. Right, now, this is not easy to get out of. I mean, look at this. I've got to try and get out of this slot somehow. Yeah, with this length of truck in that much space. Right. Here goes nothing. Let's just try and reverse it up a bit, give myself a bit more space, full lock right, and let's see if I'm just, yeah, they're moving a bit nicer, away from that helicopter. Come on, come on, come on, and I've got a feeling I'm about to hit the wall. The problem is with these trucks, these American trucks, you have no idea. And I'm nervous about that. Oh my god. I'm going to clip that other trailer. I think. I've mounted the curb of my truck. Which is not good. But. But. Not good. Come on. Actually, how bad is it? Not good. Yeah, this isn't easy. I did this a lot easier the first time I recorded this as well, which is what's annoying. Straighten up a bit. And finally it's out. Eesh. That was not easy. That was not easy at all. So. Let's um, just get out onto the road and... Ooh. Weird. Then, so this is a uh, Freightliner mod. Uh, link will be in video description uh, as long as I remember. Um, and I'll just get past that. Oh, sugar! Am I going to have to go on the other side of the road? I hope it not. 
Maybe I should put my beacons on. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Now I'm out. I'm out. Jeez, that took a lot. <sighs> yes, this is a Freightliner mod. Um, I'll put the link in the video description. It gives you this, well, Freightliner. This proper long nose American truck, which is cool as hell. It's got some really pretty cool uh, engine sounds. Uh, it's three different types of engines you can choose from as well. Uh, each one sounds a little bit different, which is also cool. Let's go make sure. Oh, God, I can't see the lights. There we go. Oh, okay. And let's go. Straighten up a bit. Got to give it an extra wide turn because of the size of the truck and the size of the trailer. Yes, um, it is such an awesome truck. The detail on the uh, model is just outstanding. And one of the things you can do, which I'll wait till I get to the top of this hill before I show you, is that you can actually go into the back. It's <laughs> this truck is a sleeper, and you can walk into the back. It's awesome. Um, Got its, it's got, oh, yeah, I've got its most powerful engine in, um, which is, I can't remember the size of it to be honest, but um, yeah, it it's a beast of an engine when you haven't got a 60 tonnes of tank hanging off the back. As you can tell, this thing is struggling up this gradual hill, which is not good. But yeah. But no, the, the detailing on this model is awesome. Uh, the trailer uh, is from Jazzy Cat. Uh, if you've never heard of Jazzy Cat before, it's a collection of mods um, which are just absolutely outstanding. They're mostly um, trailers um, and AI traffic stuff. So you'll see some different cars to the normal stock standard cars you see in ETS like that BMW uh, you'll see branded Mercedes trucks in the traffic and stuff like that you'll find trucks that have got special paint designs you'll find different coaches and buses and stuff and it just oh yeah it's awesome it kind of just reinvents the game a bit adds a bit more interest into it as well I mean it's just the sheer amount of trailers it adds like this tank it's just, yeah, it's well worth a check out and a download. Yet again, if I remember correctly, I will link to it somewhere. <laughs> but yeah, um, and the main thing is Pro Mods. Now, some of you may have heard of, uh, may not have heard of Pro Mods, but heard of things like TSM. Well, TSM and Pro Mods are basically the same thing, they are big map packs just that they're made by different people uh, and add different regions and they're made to a different standard in a way um, TSM gives you like, north of Africa as well as Spain uh, extra bits of France and stuff like that whereas Pro Mods gives you uh, more Scandinavia and Iceland and a bit of Russia as well which is awesome um, it's a reasonable size download it can be a pain to get download if you're not paying attention to what you're doing but as long as you pay attention and follow it properly um, it's not hard to install at all it's just, uh, just got to make sure you follow the instructions basically and that's a really really sharp turn hopefully nothing's coming the other way no cool oh now one thing you'll learn about these American trucks is that because you're not pretty much sitting over the front wheels like you're doing in a cab over, which is what you're used to, um, turning circles are a bit different, they handle differently as well. Before you'd be used to being able to just predict exactly where the nose is and stuff and exactly when the tits could, you know, how much steering to put input to put in. This is different because, yeah, you're so far behind the front wheels. The turning circle's much bigger, 
uh, many as the length of the truck. Um, but it just it handles different. It takes a bit of getting used to, and to be honest, I'm still getting used to it myself. So, but it's, they're, they're good fun. They're good fun. But then talking of American trucks, so it does remind me of something. It is on its way. American Truck Simulator is apparently on its way. Well, it, it, there's no apparent about it. It is coming. It is going to happen. It's due for release this year. Don't know when. But as far as I'm aware, SCS are planning to release it this year. There is already um, links on Amazon and um, Excalibur Publishing's website. If you've never heard of Excalibur, they're a, a, a game publishing house in the UK that does a lot of SES's games in the UK, distributes in the UK. They're a UK game distributor, basically. Um, so yeah, they, they have claimed dates, but nothing official yet has come out of SES. So don't believe everything you read, because it might not be right. So keep your ears around. Uh, best place to find out the latest information about it and correct information and update information is uh, the SCS blog which is at blog.scssoft.com check that out for the latest information they update you pretty regularly about stuff that's going to happen stuff that's going on or follow the twitter accounts and stuff like that and I'm about to miss a turn Luckily, I was paying attention at the last second. I didn't miss it too bad. But I completely the wrong gear for this bit of slope now. Come on, gearbox. Come on. Come on, you know you want it. There we go, it's picking up again. That truck just drove through the petrol station and didn't stop. That was weird. Is that car going to do it as well? No, but... Oh, no, okay. My mirror was frozen for a second there. That was odd. <laughs> Don't know why, but yeah. But yes, so blog.scssoft.com for all the information about American Truck Simulator. Now, one of the hopes was that they were going to release America. Not yet. We've got to be realistic. What they are releasing is California. So as it starts out, you get one state plus a bit of neighbouring edges of, or edges of neighbouring states. Um, like uh, Nevada. That's the kind of place like, you get edges. As they've said themselves, their ultimate plan is eventually to do the whole of America. <clears throat> including potentially Canada and Alaska. So someday, don't know when, you will be able to drive a truck if you want to, and if it's a job permitting, from the north of Alaska all the way down to like Las Vegas, for example. And yeah, the mind just boggles on how long that'll take. I mean, I don't know what scale they're doing it to. Um, ETS is on a 1 to 20 scale. Um, but whether they do that with uh, American Truck Sim I don't know it'd be interesting to see what scale they're doing but um, as far as I'm aware it, it, well, I've seen the box design and basically it is coming out as American Truck Simulator California Edition um, I believe now don't correct me on this I could be wrong I believe add-ons will come in but well, the extra states will come in the form of uh, potentially either <coughs> new editions and new copies of the game or as purchasable DLC. I don't know exactly which way they're doing it. I just I'm gonna go from what I've heard and rumours I've heard. From what I'm hearing, it's either gonna be one or two things, it'll either be downloadable DLC, so you have to pay for it, or a whole new uh, game that you need to buy. Eh, oh, either way, it's it's kind of reasonable because at the end of the day, a heck of a lot of work is going into it. 
I mean, their, their original plan is to do um, coast to coast. You know, east to west or west to east, whichever way around it is. I'm not sure which side California is on the top of my head right now. And I'm going to turn left this island. This is not going to be easy. Islands are not easy in this thing with that trailer. There we go. And we're across. Yeah. Um, I lost my train of thought now. Oh yeah, um, yeah. They're doing coast to coast first, um, and then they're gonna. Then once they've got that done, they're gonna do north to south or south to north, whichever way around they decide to do it, or middle out. Um, they are not denying that it's gonna take many, many years for it to be done, and I'd be surprised if it didn't, to be honest. Because um, yeah, it's America. It's huge. But one cool thing they haven't ruled out, and I believe they actually said that, I can't remember exactly, I did watch an interview with Pavel, um, Pavel Subbor, I think his name is, the head of SES Studios. Um, I did see a video interview with him where I'm pretty sure he said that the plan is that they're going to integrate the two games, potentially. So in theory, you could pick up a job in Europe, uh, I don't say in Prague, which is where SES is based, incidentally, drive to a uh, drive away to say Spain or the UK, to then board a ferry, sail to America, and then drive it across America to drop it off. I mean, seriously, how freaking cool would that be? To be driving a European cab over. In America, that's just does it get any cooler than doing that? I think SES are going the right way about it if they do do that, because that's what we want, and it's the start of World Truck Simulator in a way. Then, oh dear, clip my nose a little bit. Then, misjudged that island completely. How badly is the damage? Oh, one percent of the trailer, bugger. And that makes sense. Click the nose of my truck and done damage to the trailer. Interesting. But yes, uh, the ultimate plan is to do a world truck simulator. All the games to integrate. You know, they'll probably do America, then move on to um, <clears throat> the Eastern Bloc, Russia, Australia, and all that lot. Eventually, do ones for all the different regions, South America, and all that lot. And then getting to talk to each other. End of the day, they've got an amazing game engine here, which is struggling up this hill right a second. Here we go, here we go, here we go. Let's just put hazards on for a moment. Come on, up the hill you go. There we are. There she goes, she's up the hill now. Um, it's weirdness. But yeah, they. I've lost my train of thought yet again. Yeah, they've got an amazing game engine here. It's stable. It's rare. It crashes. The only time it really crashes is if there's a mod conflict. So the official vanilla game very rarely crashes on its own, which is really impressive. Um, the driving mechanics work really well. The driving controls work really well. So, yeah. And yeah, it's just going to be awesome. It really is. So that's American Truck Sim coming this year, and I can't wait. They have released video footage, a gameplay footage, as a teaser. Yet again, if I find the link, and remember, I'll link it in the video description. Just so you can check it out, because my god, is it cool! So that's American Truck. Next, uh, this time, I like to put it out. I have actually wrote a list of things I'm going to talk about. Moving away from your truck and stuff for a moment. But don't worry, I will come back to that. Things in the real world. What's happened since the last time I've done a video? Uh, well, I did that little short video, which I hope people found useful, of common 
little things that people may want to do to their Euro truck. I activate the console, um, turn off the police, reset the economy, stuff like that. I thought that was very useful. Um, the questions I've, I, said in the, I said in the video, questions I've seen that people ask quite common, quite commonly in forums, and I thought, well, why not just do a video instead of constantly having to answer the questions for people? Just do a video, and then people can go to that. So it just made sense. It really did, and I think it came out all right. I don't think I'll like bored people too much. Hopefully, and I just almost ran a red then. And there's a truck dealer here. I might collect that on the way through. By the way, if you want to see the truck in motion, just give me it straight up. Look at that thing. Better get back inside so I can see what I'm doing in this island. Oh, this is a much better island to go around. What is it? It's a Scania dealer. Nice. Oh, I'm very impressed with the new uh, dealers put into the game. The new dealership, should I say. Very impressed. But, um, yeah. Um, yeah, I hopefully you found that video useful. Because, um, it was a nice, quick, little, short video I put it together. Well, it would be, so there we go. Uh, right, on to other topic. One thing that I said in the last Billy Bob trucking video that I was very happy about has now kind of gone tits up. And that is Top Gear. Now, unless you've been living under a rock or you live in a different country and just don't know about this, Top Gear at the moment is, for the foreseeable future, while investigation goes on, cancelled. Um, basically, there's been an allegation that Clarkson, the lead of Top Gear, punched a producer during filming. The producer's made an official complaint to the BBC, and the BBC, while investigations are uh, ongoing, has pulled the show with the chance they may be scrapping the rest of the current season. Which is um, frustrating. It really is, because this season was shaping up to be an interesting one, let's put it that way. Um, not an all time classic, but an interesting one, nonetheless. Nonetheless? Nonetheless. Um, now, papers in the UK have been going apeshit over this and having fun. Because um, there's certain papers that fall alongside the um, what we call the Green Party in the UK or what they actually are officially called the Green Party which is the um, Save the World Planet, uh, Party, a political party uh, who have always been against Top Gear because of the carbon footprint and people should drive electric cars belief and all this kind of stuff that's all they seem to believe well yeah, they, they, they're against Top Gear, and they are doing everything they can to stoke the fire to try and get Clarkson sacked. And basically, if Clarkson goes, Top Gear goes. I'd be upset if that happens, because I love that show. I really do. But, you know, it'd be interesting to see what happens. It's, it's down to the BBC at the end of the day, what they do, what they decide to do, and so on. It's just, yeah, frustrating is the one way of putting it. It really is. Um, but all we realise at the moment, it is potentially going to cost the BBC a shed ton of money. Um, Top Gear broadcasts on to, on average, 350 million people every week around the world. It's broadcast in the most, almost every single country around the world. Apparently, apart from France, France apparently doesn't have Top Gear. Don't know why. 
they're French, I'm guessing. Um, from what I hear, France doesn't have Top Gear, um, but it's broadcast in almost every other country around the world. It's like the biggest show on BBC, the British British Broadcasting Corporation, or BBC. Uh, yeah, I say over 350 million viewers a week. Now, they had signed deals with multiple TV stations to provide uh, episodes of Top Gear and TV stations paid for them for the, the rights to rebroadcast it. Now this series has suddenly fallen three episodes short, or three or four, I'm not sure that's on the number, but either way, it's short on how many it's meant to be. So all of a sudden, these TV stations are after money. Because of loss of revenue, basically. Now, what's frustrating is the way the BBC is funded in the UK. Now, for those of you not in the UK and don't know what happens, uh, in the UK we pay a TV licence fee. Okay, It's a fee that's paid to the government uh, every year. Uh, it's about something like £75, pounds, 75 to £90 pound a year or something. I can't remember exactly how much it is off the top of my head. It might be in the hundred and something pound, I can't remember. Uh, but either way, we pay every year and what that money does is it pays for the BBC. It kind of goes towards the upkeep of like broadcasting towers and stuff like that. But basically it funds the BBC, which has um, four channels on the UK at the moment. So BBC One, BBC Two, BBC Three, BBC Four. Oh, and there's BBC News 24 as well. But yeah, the Lawless Thief pays for them. Now, should BBC have to pay out to these other TV networks, their money is basically going to have to come from the money they may have already been given by these TV networks or the license fee. So not only are they taking a show away from us, but we may have to pay other TV stations because of the fact that they're not getting the show. Which kind of, I must admit, stings a little that that's happening. But, you know, what can we do? There's nothing we can do. We've just got to wait for the investigation to happen and kind of, in a way, hope for the best. Um, but yeah, fingers crossed. This is my personal opinion. I hope it comes back. I hope Clarkson doesn't get the sack. Um, I just hope and pray it comes back. But yeah, so Top Gear at the moment is a wall. So my Sunday nights, apart from watching Squirrel, are um, empty at the moment, shall I say. So, yeah, what else can you do? But there is one weekend saviour at the moment, and that is that Formula One is back. Oh, the Australian Grand Prix was last weekend, and yeah. What an interesting one. For starters, there's this whole issue with Fernando Alonso uh, not being able to race because of the um, seemingly innocuous, innocuous accident that happened on the last day of testing, which he did get knocked out, that we found out, and he apparently did have a concussion, and his personal doctor advised him not to race, he wouldn't sign him off to race. Uh, which you know, totally understandable. Fair enough. We don't want drivers getting severely, nastily injured in the name of the sport because in the day someone's life is more important. We went through too much of that back in the past um, for it to suddenly start happening again. I mean, it almost has with the Jules Bianchi incident, unfortunately. Um, I hope and pray that he gets better. And that's coming from someone who's not even religious. But I hope and pray he gets better because he's a talent. But yeah. But there's lots of mystery come up about this because the fact that he had an accident crashing into the inside wall of a corner. Now there was allegations that he may be unwell, and that's what caused the accident. There's an allegation that he may have even been electrocuted by the Kerr system. Team have denied that. Um, the only people who seem to actually know what happened is Fernando himself, 
and even then he might not because there was a story that apparently when he came round uh, and asked him questions in the hospital that he thought he was in 19, back in 1995 in carts and was telling about how he wants to become an F1 driver something's not right there and I'm not a doctor but I can tell something is not right so yeah that, that kind of strange thing is going on but then we also got the strange situation with um, Mana Marussia F1 now those of you who don't know who Mana are they were Marussia last year um, at the end of last year they went into administration they been a back marker um, small team I can't remember what team they came out from uh, I think it was Jaguar that came Virgin or some I kind of remember the exact roots but basically every team kind of bleeds into everything else um, but yeah they came along Russia uh, and last year the Russian money just went and so the last three races last season they missed um, one of the races they, sorry, I just had something weird happen. Oh, okay. For some reason, my wait. You, oh, obviously, you won't be able to see this, but uh, my recording windows, well, recording software, I think, it all keeps minimising itself, and I have no idea why. It's kind of a bit strange, but it made me think for a second. Everything had crashed, but no, it's still running. Which is strange, but yeah. But anyway, uh, yeah, Russia, they went into administration, uh, apparently owing like somewhere in the region about $60 million in debt, which is just crazy. Um, now, over the closed season, some deals have been made and they have found themselves a packer. Now, they only got permission to race and the money only got placed two weeks before the start of the Formula 1 season so they would already miss testing they had two weeks in which to prepare a car for racing get it crash tested and get it shipped to Australia now they passed the crash test 24 hours before everything had to be freighted and flown out to Australia they got the cars out there knowing that because they're running 2014 engines but they have to rely on the 2015 software that there's a problem because of the fact that they can't actually physically start the engines because there's incompatibility with the software but there is a clause in their contracts that every every team must attend every race and must not in the term in the turn period of their contract Let's not miss more than three Grand Prix weekends. They had already missed three, so they couldn't afford to miss another one. If they did, then their winnings for coming ninth last year, which is estimated to be around about 30 to 35 million dollar mark, they would stand to lose because of the fact they did not complete the terms of the contract that they had with Formula One. And so, yeah, there was a chance they were going to lose that money, so they had to show up. So they freighted everything out got there, tried their best to set the cars up, kind of knowing that they wouldn't be racing and come race day, it was confirmed yet yeah, they won't be racing that day but, because the car had arrived and been scrutinized, they'd fulfilled all the um, obligations of the contract for the race weekend, and so therefore they technically are still eligible for their money from last year uh, they got called to Stewart's after the race to explain themselves and the stewards decide to take no further action. Bernie Eccleston's not happy. Good old Bernie. So what Bernie has now decided that basically he's not paying for their freight. It turns out the F1 cargo planes, which are run by DHL I think, um, Bernie pays for it all. Or the, the, the company, the, the consortium that owns the, the rights to Formula 1 and the money of Formula 1 um, pays for the plane and he's basically saying that he's not he's not satisfied and that Marussia are going to have to pay for the freight themselves this is 28 tonnes of freight and personnel they're going to pay for now so the whole situation hasn't yet come to a head 
but by the sounds things they are now going to have to find some money to pay for the, pay for these flights and stuff. It seems a little harsh because in the day they were following the rules of the they were following the word of the rules. And they turned up. They had their car scrutineered. They had the car built and everything set up. They just couldn't get it to work. Just FIA scrut. Uh, FA um, scrutineers and marshals um, are satisfied. The stewards and the clerk of the course were satisfied, but Bernie wasn't. And this is going to be a tricky corner here now. So, yeah, this could, it's going to be interesting. It's going to go on a bit, and that's some damage to my truck, which I wasn't hoping for. Eesh. Come on, engine. Come on. Turn left here in a second. Come on, come on, come on. Can I? T oh no! Trolled. Damn it! Okay, this is gonna be interesting. That's really tight. Come on, come on, come on, come on. There we go. Yeah. So. They've never found the money to pay for that. It feels a bit unfair. But rules and Bernie don't always see eye to eye. And I just. What did I just clip? I didn't clip anything. I swear I did not clip anything just then. Hmm. Interesting. I wanted to watch that back to you while I hit there because that's just puzzled me. But otherwise, moving on from them, we've had Mercedes come along yet again and just basically go, yeah, see you lot, uh, we raise you one kick-ass bitching car that is super fast. Uh, good luck catching us up. Now, Williams looked like they had a chance, uh, but unfortunately, like, one of their drivers got injured. Oh, shut up. I have a horn too. One of their drivers got unfortunately injured during qualifying after taking a really nasty bump and my god do I need to go out close to that edge. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Yeah. I'm in. Awesome. Yeah, he took a really nasty hit and so he injured his back. I don't know how long he's going to be out for. But it's a shame. Um, Massa did his best, but they just didn't have the race pace over the Ferraris. But the Ferraris have got race pace again, which is cool and awesome. Basically, they've got their heads down and got it, got on working. Red Bull, however, did crap because they have decided to stick with the Renault engines, and Renault are crap this year. Red Bull didn't like this. I've just turned my engine off by mistake because I'm a donut. Red Bull don't like this and have now basically threatened to take their ball and go home. They have threatened that they are going to leave Formula 1 unless the rules are drastically changed to so take it away from a power formula and back to an aerodynamic formula, which is just ridiculous. Oh, sorry about that jump cut there. Um, it's like technical hitch that does quickly solve. Yeah, um, yeah. they're saying that they want it to be less of a power formula and more of a aerodynamic formula because they actually, basically they've got Adrian Newey who's the number one aerodynamicist and they have Renault who built the shittiest engine series. Well, my first belief is if Red Bull is saying that, Formula 1 should turn and go, okay, thanks so much, see you, bye. Lotus seen what's happening in Renault and they went to Mercedes because they're seeing how good a Mercedes engine is compared to Renault. Lots of the other teams are not bitching and moaning like Red Bull. All because they're not winning again. Well, sorry. Tough shit. I wish for a uh, warning bad language on this video. Oh. Yeah, tough. 
because in the day you win some you lose some we had to put up with four years of you winning everything well that time you lost some stuff but that's my personal opinion because I know there's probably some Red Bull fans out there but yes Formula 1 is back my god it's awesome to have it back I've missed it and I'm going to be turning left but I need to go into the right hand lane because of the width of this goddamn truck Oh, one thing you will notice is I have the the road signs and stuff in the UK are going to look a little bit different. Look a bit more realistic. That's because I got a UK improvement mod running as well, which is part of a, an extra map pack which does not work with Pro Mods or TSM. No matter what it says, it doesn't actually work. It crashes my game, but it. it it comes bundled so you can easily install it and use it and it's awesome. It changes from the UK junctions and stuff to make it look a bit better. But yeah, so uh but yeah, so Red Bull, tough. I don't care about you. So there we go. Well that's was on my list to talk about. Oh yes. You may remember in my last video me saying about how um Google are pissing me off because uh, they have not accepted my AdSense application. Well, good news, they have finally accepted it. It only took me having to build a whole brand new website uh, to get it to work. But I am now officially a YouTube partner, which is awesome and great. And so, yes, granted, you will see, hopefully, a lot more content from me, as and when I can do it, merely. Because um, today, I've still got a full-time job, and I've still got a wife, <laughs> and a personal life. So, I will do doing whatever I can to get videos up as much as I can. And it won't all be your truck. Um, I will do some other stuff, but it's just getting around to recording other stuff. Um, but yeah, so... That's all cool news, and as I've just mentioned, I now have a new website. It's uh, www.blackhawkso.com. Uh, go there, and you will be able to see uh, links to my five most recent YouTube videos, as well as a link to my Twitch page, and also uh, a page that describes and details my setup. All. Oh, uh, the parts that are in my rig, including links to buy them. Now, you may notice the links to Amazon. Originally, admittedly, I set them up as partner links, but Amazon have decided that apparently I am not suitable. Because Amazon are just like that. But uh, the, the links are still there, so you can get the same processor, graphics cards, or similar graphics card, because you can't go and reference R9270 for some weird ass reason. But yeah, you can basically pretty much almost build a rig like mine because it's cool. Um, I had to make me think I need to update it because as literally today I got a brand new mouse. Um, interesting story behind the mouse is the fact that Christmas, last Christmas, uh, the in-laws asked me what I wanted for Christmas and I said I'd oh, like a new keyboard and mouse. So they ordered me the CM Storm uh, Devastator uh, combo pack. When it arrived, it, the box was beaten up, and so they um, assumed that it was going to be damaged. Um, they got a refund from Amazon and everything, and using the gift certificate refund I got, I ended up actually buying myself the Razer Black Widow keyboard, because I had some money for Christmas. Awesome. Um, Today they came and visited my wife and they brought it with them, the, Devast the Devastator set. Um, it was the first time I looked at it and it turns out everything in it's pristine. So I have now got my new mouse, which is something I've been needing because I worked out the other day, my old mouse is 13 years old, so 12 or 13 years old. It has had much love and it's I still believe it's one of the best mice out there. It's such a shame that Logitech no longer make it and you can't buy it new anymore. But this new one, it's CM Storm uh, 
devastating mouse that comes with the keyboard. It is a nice little mouse. I think you can buy it on its own. Um, at the moment it seems alright. It's, it's a different DPI because it's much more... It's a, <laughs> the 12, 13 years of invent, like, research in, has gone into the uh, sensor in this one. It's a bit of a newer sensor than the old one. <laughs> but yeah, it's, it's taken a bit of getting used to. It's a slightly different hold and also the right click is it's like a hair trigger. I think it's designed really with like LOL players and Dota players in mind. You know, it's a lot of right mouse button clicking. But, um, yeah, I'll get used to it. It'd be interesting. It's going to take a bit of time, but it seems to be comfortable so far. It's more of a. I'm trying to figure out if it's, it's more of a claw grip mouse. Um, but, yeah, I like it so far. Keyboard. I'm going to keep as a backup. Not that my Razor Black Widow is ever going to go wrong, really, but I will keep it as a backup because you just, it never hurts to have a, a second keyboard keep around. Even though, admittedly, I am now currently surrounded by, well, if I look around quickly now, one, two, three, four spare keyboards and the one I'm using to five keyboards around me at the moment. <laughs> yeah, I've got a few keyboards. I've got a bit of a keyboard kleptomaniac addiction what you want to call it. Um, but yeah, it's cool. It's all good. I like my keyboards. But yeah. Um, so yeah, it's going to take a bit getting used to. But, so my website, yes, we go blackballso.com. Check it out. Um, it's brand new. There is more stuff going to come, to come on it. Um, uh, but yeah. Any news? I will. I will eventually link up news on there. At some point, I'll make a page to do that. Uh, it's just literally finding time to do that. But I will do. So it's all good. <sighs> right. I'm just trying to wrap my brains out, trying to remember all the links I need to put in the video description because I'm starting to come towards the end of this journey. Uh, I didn't. Remember this journey taking this long? When I first did it. I mean, um, well, merely with the jump cut. If you didn't have the jump cut in there, it is currently over 50 minutes long. I can't remember. I'm not sure actually sure how much I'll be losing out with the jump cut, but they'll be losing some out. So there we go. And so I mean, I keep accidentally right clicking. It's just something I've got to. I've got to get used to this mouse so much. Come on, truck. Almost done. And change lane. It's the scary thing with this truck because it's so big you can only really change lane on a bend because it's the only way you can actually see around the trailer. You kind of have to rely on um, the AI, which is something I never like doing. To be honest, I don't think anyone ever likes doing because trusting the AI. And there we go, I've actually clicked it again. Jeez, I've got to get used to this very much. But yeah. Download Pro Mods. You won't regret it. Or TSM, one of the two. Don't just run vanilla ETS. It's an amazing game. It's an amazing game engine and stuff. But it can always be improved by mods and well okay I'm about to change lane but there's no point because the lane's about to close finish but yeah why run a vanilla game if you don't have to there's amazing mods out there truck mods trailer mods map mods you name it it's out there oh dear I've probably just missed my turning because I was not paying attention I was going way too quick for those lights I'm hoping there's another turning Otherwise, I've got to find somewhere to try and turn this big rig around. Uh, no GPS hasn't updated yet. Can I turn down here somewhere? I see traffic lights. Oh! <laughs> I'm in the zone already for parking, apparently. I could park it from up here. I'd rather actually get to the zone. Don't troll me, AI. Please don't troll me. 
Oh, I think I might have clipped something then. Yeah, I may have clipped the traffic lights. The size of that thing is huge. Right, left turn coming up. Wide. There we go. Nicely done. So close. Now this thing is interesting to park. Let's put it that way. It's a bit of a challenge. And if I remember correctly, the drop-off site doesn't help. And let's get this turning done. It is what I remember it as. All right, here we go. Bring it in. This is one of these ones where it's around the corner and it's a tight turn. What I'm going to do, stick on that other mirror because I kind of need it just to get through this bit. Come on, come on, don't clip the building. Come on, get round the corner. There we go. No, I'm not going to skip. I'm not going to do auto park because this is the fun. It's the challenge of parking this thing. But last time I did this job, on the previous recording, that other trailer wasn't there. Yeah. This has just got a bit more difficult. Try and swing it in. Oh. Okay. Come on. Come on, girl. In you come. The problem is, the train is so long, it won't strain it up in that length of space. That's what I mean by the reverse now. How difficult it is because it's the way this handles. So different. Right. Come on, come on. Work it over that way. Spin it in, spin it in. Come on, flick it in, flick it in, flick it in, flick it in. Damn it! I know technically that's cheating if I got it in then. Okay. That's not good. Oh my god, I'm miles away from doing this. Oh, I stalled then. That's not good. I'm going to have to finish this off on the outside because I'm just struggling too much. Even though it's not making it any easier. into the truck. Alright, here we go. Get in this time. There 
There we go. That was not easy. That was a challenge. That really was a challenge. Continue. Uh, oh yeah, I was going to show you something, wasn't I? If I just pull out of here first. Let's get out of this area. It's kind of easier said than done because there's now a tank in the way. Oh, I already delivered, so I don't care if I knock their trailer. They're not going to downgrade me any more points. Right, here we go, park up. Actually, no, I'll leave the engine on just in case. But if I dial down my cube key, I'm not sure if it's lit in the back. But you keep going, you keep going, keep going. You find yourself in the back of the truck. How freaking cool is this? Now, I'm going to actually, what I'm going to do, if I go into driver's seat, do it again. Start the engine up. I'm going to go to that resting point over there. I'm going to sleep to make it daytime. Because it's even better when you can actually see properly in the back. Driving a bit like a maniac. Let's just buy this garage. Yes, I do want to buy the garage. Go away. Now, see if it'll let me rest up. Oh, actually, I might have to do it in here even. Oh no, okay. Let's do the sleep. Okay, it's daytime now, so we can actually see. Turn around. You see all the cool things like the phone there, which looks a bit weird. Look up there, the CB, that cord on the CB radio swings and stuff like that, but then you keep going and. Ooh, dodgy curtains. But then you keep going, keep going. And as you know, you're in the back of the truck, technically at the table with your laptop. You can look all around and. How freaking cool is this? Oh, in fact, actually, oh, keep going. I didn't realize that. You actually sit down at your desk at the back. How cool is this? The microwave, you've got your fridge. I guess that's kind of some sort of storage cupboard and more there. And how often do you see truck mods like this? That's really cool. But yeah. So, I just have to show you that, because that bit's so awesome. But anyway, that's the end of this episode. <sighs> Billy Bob will be back. And there'll be other game videos at some point, which I'll sort out and record. But yes, thank you for watching, and see you next time. Bye-bye.